to another episode on ASUG 12 exams. So in this episode, we continue looking at the 2020 Internal Science Paper 2. So this is the 10th episode in a series of episodes that has focused on this paper. The first episode covered this section M, then the second episode looks at question E, B1, going all the way up to B8. So if you haven't seen the last nine episodes, please check out on our YouTube channel. So question C1, in this section where you are expected to answer two questions out of three, and each question carries 10 marks, leads. One major use of iron in everyday life is in making of arrows. Question A, describe the structure of an arrow, draw a labeled diagram to illustrate your answer. So let me just light here. A. So the first thing that we need to know is, we need to understand what is an arrow. So an arrow is a mixture of two or more metals, which can also be the case of metals and the non-metals when you are dealing with the case of carbon steel. So the first thing is to define what an arrow is. So an arrow is a mixture of two or more metals. That's it, an arrow. Then you have one exception, like I've said, which is steel when you mix metals and the non-metals to make it steel. So how does the structure of an arrow look, which is in this case? So the structure of an arrow is a combination of two or more elements. You need that one. So you can have this element, which shall be lead. So this will be the same element, lead. Then we can also have the blue one. You see this? So is this what you need to show? That what we are having is not a pure element. So in the case of 3, you can have something like that. So you see the sizes that would differ, the size of these elements, or the colors, are able to distinguish the colors, then that will be okay. So what I can do is, I need to label this one. So this is an arrow that I'm talking about. Then, let me say I'm dealing with him, bless. So I can say this, the red one can be zinc. Then I can have this blue to be copper, which is a metal. So, if you can't think of any, you can just call this to be metal 1, then this to be metal 2. Once you do that, you are good to go and you get the full max. So, this is what needs to be clear. So, in this case, I've used an example of only two metals, which is the case of bless. So, once you do this, you get these uh, three max. So what is key is make sure that you draw the diagram to illustrate your answer. Once you draw this, you are good to go. Question B, give two reasons why iron is arrowed. What is also of critical importance is for you to know that an alloy, alloy is a mixture. Don't confuse this with a, a compound. A compound is a chemical reaction. So it's a mixture of two elements that are chemically bonded. That's a compound. But an arrow, there is no ke chemical bonding. It's just the mixture of two elements. So let me answer B on a new page. So B, the question is, why is alloyed? So we need to give two reasons. So the first one is because iron is a weak metal in its pure form. So iron is weak in its pure form. So because it's weak, when it is alloyed with another element, say with carbon to form steel, it makes a much stronger material which is used for building. So alloying of iron makes it stronger. The case of steel, which is 
an alloy of iron and the carbon so that's the first reason the second reason is to prevent lasting so prevent lasting that's the second reason so when iron is alloyed with say chromium and nickel they form stainless steel which is the resistance to lasting and corrosion so an example is when iron is alloyed with chromium and nickel to form stainless steel which is resistant to corrosion so that's the second reason so prevention of lasting then to make it stronger so once you do that you are good to go question c name two alloys of iron so we've talked about these already we've talked about stainless steel and the uh, mild steel so all these are um, alloy of iron so see here we've talked about mild steel which is the combination of iron and carbon then we've got also stainless steel which is a combination of iron chromium and nickel so you need to know that Roman number two of c state one use of each alloy stated in c Roman number one so we just need to state the uses let me go to the new page so this is c Roman number two so what do you use mild steel for so mild steel is used in car bodies then when you talk about stainless steel is used in cutlery and surgical instruments Also, stainless steel is used in building because of its strength. That's what you need to know. So, if you look at most of these are cutlery that you use, cutlery or utensils that you you see, they use stainless steel because they are strong. As a result of them, the strength that is possessed by stainless steel, and they are resistant to corrosion or lasting. This is the case for most of the kitchen utensils that are other than using aluminium they also use stainless steel. We look at question D give one use of iron other than making alloys. So what is the other use of iron than making alloys? So this is D. So iron is used in a number of things because of its silver gray in color. So number 1 is used in templo magnet as a coil or solenoid is used in templo so for making templo magnet as a coil solenoid number 2 iron is used as a catalyst in the upper process of producing ammonia so used as a catalyst so these are things that you need to know because of our chemistry in the album process of manufacturing ammonia 
Number three that you can think about, remember the question just wants you to give one, so I'm going to give you maybe four or three. It's also used to make electricity pi uh, pylons, chains and then lifo, lifo, so used to make electricity pylons, also chains, etc and etc. The number form, which I'll give you to be the last one, is also used to make pipes because of its resistance to lasting and corrosion. So used to make pipes. and pumps because of EC resistance to corrosion. So once you do this, you are good to go and you would get yourself the 10 marks from this section which is very important for you to do well. So thank you for joining me in this episode. Please join me in the next episode as I look at question C2 in detail.